It's our first time back in Mexico together since my mastectomy, which is over five weeks ago now. This evening, we're headed to our friends from the boatyard, Mike and Katie's, to hang out on their recently launched sailboat. We haven't really been to the side of the, uh, what do you call this, harbor? They finished work at the yard while I was still recovering in Arizona, and it's our first visit to their now floating home. Such a beautiful evening. That tide is way out. A lot of little fish in the water. Nature, it's been so long. Truthfully, the evening felt a bit strange to me. I'm super glad to be back, but at the same time, I'm feeling just a little bit lost. I no longer feel like the same person I was before I left here. But fortunately, there's a 36-foot sailboat desperate for my attention, and that might just be exactly what I need right now. Back in Mexico, I'm back on the boat, and it feels so good. I'm, my mood is like instantly lifted um, in some like, heaviness kind of in the last couple weeks but um nothing lifts your spirits like seeing the fruits of our labor and being that much closer to actually having the boat on the water i think hanging out with our friends the other night on their boat yeah motivated us so we actually today floating. we just uh decided to put the boat in water a week from today we went to the marina just now to get a slip for a month because we're still trying to figure out all the health things but we think having the boat in the water and getting systems going and sea trialing it having air conditioning we're doing products in the boat will be good for us so yeah and it's good we're for the it. boat too because one yeah. of the things like we've been talking a lot about is um like leaving the boat in the desert when it's gonna be 130 degrees all summer is really bad for like the rubber gaskets and all sorts of things so um yeah we think it'll be better to have her in the water and then this way you know if things go a certain way you know we can head south and start cruising if not at least she's in the water and she's floating <laughs> and yeah, i've seen the boat way worse so this is not really yeah, this is the area i got targeted it's all this, this is all the park stuff that i haven't you know, I gotta get this cushion back in. I see the varnish behind you just like sparkling in the sun. <laughs> Does it make you excited? That's so good. Look at that varnish. I love the big bimini too. I think the cockpit was claustrophobic without knowing it. Yeah, like, I, I know. Like I think it's wide arches. It just feels more open and airy, but like protected at the same time. And this looks amazing. This uh, little varnish job over here. Table. Now it's time to get back to work. Yeah. So we have a new ditch bag uh, that we found actually thanks to Brooke of Sailing Vessel One Life. Really good buy um, on Amazon. Good material, right size. This is our old ditch bag. So you can see, see in better days. Um, and I have a whole separate project which is on our to-do list. Um, which is basically to go through everything before we cross the Pacific and get whatever else we need, but I'm not doing that right now. Now I'm just transferring what we had on the old one to the new one and kind of taking a mental inventory. Steps, baby steps. packed and sorted everything into categories, adding in a few missing basics to get our medical kit more up to snuff before returning it all to our new ditch bag. Just doing some engine checks here before we try to start her up today. Add a little bit of coolant. I'm in the process of changing the O-ring and the impellers. Uh, here's the old one. Wasn't in too bad a shape. I don't see any cracks, but figure start fresh it makes sense. At least we didn't lose any, uh, like in the heat exchanger or something like that. Hopefully she starts, it's been like nine months. So I found um, a few problems in our ditch bag. Um, we used to have a VHF in there, like a spare VHF, and this was like the battery packet for it. And it looks like there's some corrosion on there. We don't actually know where the VHF even is. And all the batteries we had were corroded. Um, I need to obviously spend some time on this ditch bag. We had water in there, medical kit was in good shape. Um, but yeah, I wanna put some sunscreen in there. Haven't done this in a long time. 
It's like what? in the old New York days, running engines on the hard. We see this every winter for winterization. Running our diesel engine requires water moving through the heat exchanger to keep it cool. But without water entering externally via the through hull, we've got to feed water into it manually. I think if I prime this, the pump will do its job. I think it has a hard time when it's dry, the head pressure isn't enough to bring it up. We'll see, it's an experiment. This is just to make sure that everything is working for launch. This boatyard has a pretty rough, uh, rough record of boats coming back out of the water, and I really am trying to avoid that. It's either due to like engine troubles or like through hauls are leaking. I think the through hauls haven't had something to do with the fact that it's so hot here. I think the rubber just gets uh, like just melted up. We only have two that aren't tapered cone bronze, so those are, everything's been serviced. So hopefully those two don't cause this trouble. Uh, we'll see. Nothing's behind a boat that could get wet, right? I don't know. Ah, uh, the ditch pack. The new ones on that way? Which, uh... Oh, it's okay. It's coming up there. Any water? Yeah. I saw it at first. Not, no water. It was working great in the beginning. Yeah. It just kind of died out a bit. Let me put a hose clamp on this. Okay. So. <laughs> There's so much water. <laughs> don't try this at home. You don't want to hydro lock the engine either, so I can't put too much pressure. Um, so I'm watching the strainer. Because hydro lock needs to get water into the oil. It shoots through the cylinders. Uh, I'm going to hose clamp to the hose. This is so ridiculous. I think I'm going to need a shower tonight. Yeah. This, this is, is definitely cool. a dirty job day. <clears throat> this is ridiculous. Do not try this at home, kids. I don't even understand what it is we're not trying. Uh, you're supposed to let it gravity bleed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right, round two. <laughs> Yeah. You see like a little bit of smoke? Any smoke? Yeah, a little bit. Blacker. No, it's kind of gray. Like a light gray. Well, it's probably hot. Yeah. Is there a lot of water or not really? Um, I think there's a good amount for the fact that we're in idle. So engine test was successful. And now we're testing that the bilge pump works because we have a big thing of water that we don't know how to get rid of. We got most of it in. <laughs> Is it pumping out the back? Yeah, it's coming out now. I'm just filming this because I feel like very compelled to. A look. How gross. <laughs> the ice machine is. The ice machine is. That's what happens when you leave it so long. That is, I mean, to be Ooh. completely honest. <laughs> or clear. you don't clean it that often. <laughs> I prefer the latter. I, I know so many people, I have so many friends that would be so disgusted by this right now. So grossed out. I mean, I'm grossed out myself. Um, so, we're gonna take this bad boy down and add it to the the pile, the washing pile. You Moving on to the um, paddleboard next. Everything is so filthy. It's definitely the dirtiest boat yard in the world. Yeah, that's the. This is definitely bad. Obviously. So there's obviously a leak there. 
We're cleaning it so we can put it back on the boat, but also to find out where it's leaking because it didn't hold air all these months. So we know one spot is here. Huh? Yeah, we know that's leaking. Stingy's been through a lot. It's actually pretty old. Yeah. Full time cleaning all these years. minus three days until we go in the water. Uh, today we are going to paint the prop. We are going to finish the dinghy. We have to patch it. Um, Bill's gonna do the stuffing box and a little bit more cleaning and stuff today. Um, it's really starting to get exciting. I'm so, so excited to get this boat in the water. Both of us are just yeah, I mean, we're honestly a little nervous right now because we want to make sure we get everything done and it's hard to control that always, but we got the engine started yesterday, so that was good. Um, and yeah, gotta grind it out again today. Right, honey? Patching supplies ready here. Yeah, it's a bit of a process to patch the knee. I've never done it successfully, so hopefully this time is different. And we know a lot of other people who have had trouble too. Yeah, it's not too. as easy as it looks. Not I'm just, just gonna go Calico my- Skies problem. Yeah, it's not a- not the easiest thing in the world to do, but hopefully <laughs> I get it done. Basically, you have to sand it, which is to get it rough, almost like a suede texture, sure. they said. And then you gotta put some like solvent on it. Two lane, okay. Got some patches. And got then, our two part glue. <clears throat> so, sand, solvent, patch? Uh, you gotta let the glue sit for 30 minutes, apparently. Oh, right. And then you yeah. apply more glue. So, they said doing a Warm, dry environment. This is pretty warm and dry, so I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it's like 74. I gotta get the old one of the patches. One's a new patch, one's a leaking patch. And I don't know if there's more, but that's what I found when I was. I basically went through and cleaned the whole boat yesterday and also waxed it. So the anywhere there was holes, like the bubbles were pretty clear. So I'll at least get the two we know of and then we'll reevaluate if it loses air. <laughs> This one was certainly leaking yesterday. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a Dremel, some sandpaper. I saw some Tula's video on how to Tula's repair. endless summer, that is. Yep, on how to repair a video. So I'm gonna take it and just Dremel off all old glue and get it like a suede consistency. See this? Stuff helps break up the glue. Ooh, that one's leaking. <laughs> that would be a leak, folks. Each one seems to be working better than the chemical or the sandpaper alone. It gets quite hot, but it looks a lot better. Yeah, that's almost a gray color again. Let's just be happy we're going cruising. Hopefully. Better than I could do. How do you measure 25 to 1 on something so small? Maybe I'll do half the bottle? <laughs> That'd be 125 of this stuff. Right? Is that 25 to 1? Uh, 5 to 125? Yeah, so I'll, I'll pour it up to this to 125 and then... Oh, Not what I expected. Probably should have gloves on, eh? And a raw dog. It. I have to go to one time. It's like half a second. Ooh, that stuff smells strong. Mm hmm That's about half. We'll see. So we're gonna paint this mm -hmm. on really thin. So I, I think last time I went really thick. Oh, we have to depressurize. Well, we're not putting the patches on yet. So basically you paint it and let the paint sit, paint the glue on and let it sit for 30 minutes. And then you come back and do another round and let it sit for five minutes. Okay. And then you put the patch on. So the dinghy has to be deflated. We can't have it at full pressure like this. Let's turn it into a boat project. Yeah, this is... <laughs> the, the reason we're doing this, like, it's not really a priority, but it takes 48 hours before we put the boat to full pressure. And today is Tuesday, and the boat is going on slings Friday. So I would like to have it done so we can put the boat in a dinghy to have it with pressure, because otherwise it's really hard to secure it and stuff, so... The key here is very thin. That's, yeah. why, that's why I chopped the paintbrush. I got so soft oh, bristles aren't there. Two of those endless summer yeah, tips they went to a right professional there. place, and I'm willing to try anything because I've never done it successfully yet. So, like you would think, the more the better. 
Okay, so now it's round two of glue. We waited half an hour. It was totally dry, I'm a little suspicious, but that's what the instructions say to do. It's totally dry, right? I mean, it's... I don't know how to describe it. I don't know. Maybe someone knows, leave a comment. Are we like, is this like epoxy we're making like a chemical bond or something? I wish I knew what the hell I was doing, but we're just following instructions. Basically going with the speedy technique here. So I want a thin layer, and it seems like you have one shot to get it on in that thin coat, otherwise it kind of clumps up on you. Does that look great to you? Yep. And we got a roll layer out. Oh, got a little bit close to the top. Hmm. Let's get all the air bubbles out. There it is. I think it changed shape when you deflated it. Probably. Oh, that's probably right. My last one. <sighs> that took about two hours. <laughs> about two and a half. In a quick lunch break. Lunch break, which for Bill is peanut butter sandwich. Peanut butter. For me is yogurt and fruit that I made this morning. Bill's not a yogurt fan. And don't mind the new sun enclosures going up. Yeah. Canvas guys are in process, so that's another thing we added to the arch structure. Which looks pretty good. Pretty cool. It's bad it's on, not on this side where the sun is today, but they're coming back later. Yeah, so I'm always editing in between projects. We it's, my, this will it's, be, it's my break, is edit. This will be a huge, huge shade advantage for us. That makes yeah. it like a little living room. I'm excited too. for it. I think it's that creates be... like a whole other living space out here. Yeah. I think we're about two days from launch now, so I'm going to apply a prop speed uh, to the propeller. The first step though is to sand it down with some 80 grit, uh, just to get like fresh metal before I go ahead and clean it. Second is some two prep steps cleaning and acid washing it and then a coating goes on which is like this weird bronzy color and then a clear coat goes on top of that. So it's a four step process. All this has previously been sanded probably about a month or two ago. Um, I'm just removing any oxidation layer or something. I'm not really sure the instructions didn't say when I had to sand it by. So I figured I'd go over it once more just to make sure. Two part. This is the yellow stuff that you see on prop speed. Oops. It's really thick. Maybe have the hardener kick off a little bit, I don't know. So this is prop speed silicone stuff. Now this is like the clear coat finish. The yellow is just a primer, so our primer didn't come in that good, but I'm hoping the silicone will work out okay. Prop speed came out, eh, okay. I'm not super stoked with it, but whatever, it's worth a shot, first time. Um, right now I'm putting on two zincs. Uh, we don't really know what the future holds with Grace's treatment, so um, we just put one on because we're not at slips, but we might be leaving the boat in the marina, so I figured I'd put two on just to be safe, because we might have to be away from it a little more than normal. I'm gonna do a little more paint on the leading edges of the rudder, which is like up here, the keel, which is the leading edge of the keel and then the water line, like a top foot. I went ahead and scuffed it, but now I'm just going through and putting a little uh, acetone paint thinner just to kind of get a good surface bond to this last layer of paint. And then tomorrow, we are gonna, when they lift us, do the centerboard and keel. But the slings will be in the way once we're in a travel lift, so I am not gonna do, I'm doing this first before they come tomorrow morning. Ready for the water line here. You can see where I cut the hull, slightly different color. And I'm just gonna hit those areas. work on our cockpit table came out so good and inspired us to re-varnish our salon table as well. Actually, we're hoping to do a lot more varnish work on the interior once we're floating, but we'll lose this great workspace when we launch, so we're taking advantage since our salon table is removable. The process is the same as before. Sand, varnish, sand, repeat. The only difference is we aren't beginning with a coat of clear epoxy, which we did for the exterior wood to help combat the elements. So we moved the table over here to this side. You do not want varnish to um, 
be exposed to the sun. Um, ideally, no wind either, so that dust particles aren't blown. Um, but before I varnish, I'm just finishing up the sanding by taking a little piece of sandpaper and going into the, the places where the sander was too big to get that little piece of the seam. Okay, we are using Gleam. Um, Total Boat told us that this is one of the preferred varnish products by their customers because it doesn't smell as much, smell as, yeah. much um, as their other product, Lust, which I liked a lot um, and didn't really find it to be that smelly, but let's try to gleam on our galley table that is dried now a couple hours later. And then learn from doing the interior that you want to do thin, even strokes. That's what I'm doing. Sweet. It's gonna look so good. So, T minus one day looking really good and then this one which is shadowed I'm gonna flip it now and do the other side okay, so it's seven now just packing up as we do time to go didn't film it but just did a second coat on this cockpit table I mean sorry galley table I'm so tired which is looking good and then um, uh, another coat on the um, garbage lid thing. And we're gonna go get Chinese food, which is, <laughs> sounds kind of funny in Mexico, but it's pretty good. It's, you know, it's not great, but it's good. And it's super cheap. It's like six bucks for a giant thing with like a spring roll and whatever. But it was a good day. We're super excited. We have a little bit normal state too. It was so hard being up in Arizona all that time. I'm so out of shape just from sitting around. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Are you ready? I can't believe this is happening. It's a little nerve wracking. Honestly, I don't think we're gonna be excited until tomorrow after we get to the marina. Join us next time for the event we've been waiting for for what feels like forever. Are we I don't know, are we? What is that? It's such a huge milestone, one we've worked painstakingly towards for months. What could possibly go wrong?